Sorry. During the break, you can go up to him and ask him. Mandy, after two or three days of war, you suddenly find yourself um, commanding the uh, last containment line in uh, uh, the Sinai between the Mitle and the Gidi and Refidim. Before the war, you were only preparing for an attack. You know, the whole uh, idea behind the bridges was of, of moving forward. The uh, concept was that if there's war, you have to cross the canal and uh, threaten Cairo so that they understand the, the hint and they stop. And they didn't prepare anything in the way of defense. No one thought defensive, only offensive. So how, come, how, how did this happen? How did this conceptual failure happen? Well, you're right in saying that the basic operative um, type of thought was offensive. We came to the conclusion, and I think it was the right conclusion, that um, we cannot expect much from uh, 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 defense. I mean, there's nothing you can do about it. You have to defend initially, but as quickly as possible, you have to move over to uh, uh, an offensive uh, mode, and this had been the conception. And I think that this caused us great damage because um, the uh, offensive on the 8th of the month by Bren's um, uh, division was done in uh, uh, you know, uh, was was done in a rash way uh, and uh, not in an orderly way. And if they'd waited another 24 hours, 38 hours, then uh, the forces would have been better organized and perhaps the results would have been better. However, the basic concept was that we would defend where necessary, but very uh, quickly, very swiftly, we're going to uh, start an attack. And this was a concept. This was a concept based on uh, an attack by the infantry, the Egyptian infantry, and therefore there was no um, defense in place. I uh, got a mission a few days after the. Uh, uh, failure of the counterattack, my division was ordered to go down to Sinai and prepare a second line of defense. I think Uzi uh, mentioned it in his notes when they were published, but that's the way it was. We thought that the Egyptians would do what we uh, would have done in their place, namely after the success of the uh, initial attack, then you uh, uh, they would capitalize on their success and if they had done that that could have been very problematic for us because we were not prepared for such a stage fortunately for us they did not move any further they stopped uh, where they had reached initially initially which uh, allowed us to prepare and to rearrange ourselves and prepare a second line of defense uh, because we realize that the Egyptians are not going to move forward. And until the 14th of the month, the uh, uh, warfare be remained rather static. We tried to organize vis-a-vis -vis the forces that had crossed the canal and prepare for a counterattack. Now, you know, everybody's uh, uh, very impressed with the ability of the IDF to cross the canal back. But you were part of an operation that never took uh, place uh, of overtaking the Egyptian oil fields. And then we wouldn't have had to fight our way back to the water line. And that uh, might have seemed um, more suitable with the IDF line of thinking rather than do exactly what the Egyptians had done before. Why didn't the government opt for that or the IDF? Well, this kind of move, in hindsight, we know that if it uh, had been done at the very initial stage, it would have definitely diverted forces from the northern part of the Egyptian front. But the first um, uh, 
uh, plan was that this sort of move should be done 24 hours before the ceasefire, that we should go in and seize the uh, oil fields beyond the Suez um, Gulf, the Gulf of Suez, and if necessary, move north in order to cut off the Third Army altogether and assist those forces fighting in the north. However, what happened, as we know, is that uh, bef because of uh, Russian ultimatum, we didn't get those 24 hours. We were promised, at least that's what they said, that Kissinger promised a 24-hour notice before uh, the ceasefire started. And the plan was to to do this during those 24 hours, but since we didn't get the 24 hours, we didn't do it. We were uh, uh, ready, we were all um, ready to go, but we didn't have time. So just uh, if you could conclude, please, and then uh, David, but that's it. Well, just a little word about the opening situation. People keep saying that you mustn't prepare for the war that you already fought, but rather to the war that you're going to fight. However, people tend to um, dwell on things that they had experience with, and that's what they discuss. On top of that, no one really knows or no one can really tell what the next war is going to be like, even though you have to prepare for it. So what we need, I think, is just to have a well-trained military, well-trained for everything, and then you can send it uh, on any kind of mission uh, in any kind of changing warfare reality. Yesterday evening, I uh, went to a concert, and, and uh, while sitting in the concert, I uh, was thinking about what I'm going to say here today. And it occurred to me that a military is like an orchestra. First of all, the um, musicians have to know how to play. The military has to know how to fight. Secondly, uh, what kind of score they're going to play, what kind of concert they're going to play, whether they're going to use all the musicians or not, that's a different uh, story. But who's going to decide whether they will play a tragedy or a melodrama? Even before that, you have to decide what you're going to play. Yes, definitely. I think, though, that if there's anything that we can learn from this, it was mentioned already that the military didn't have any reserves, that the military used all the forces that he had and allocated them, even though they moved forces from the north to the south. The Musa Pellet's division was brought from the north. It, it didn't participate in the war, but it, it might have participated. The feeling was that um, a war on two fronts was too much for the idea of uh, orbit or uh, that the, the orbit was just enough and therefore after the war the idea uh, built up its uh, power increased its its uh, orbit and started training very intensively thank you david well as for preparations the air force came to the war with an increased uh, orbit, I think 370 um, aircraft with good navigation and ordnance uh, capabilities. However, practically speaking, we didn't have any technological solution for uh, uh, air defense um, uh, equipment. And I think that in the Air Force, technological solutions is uh, is the most important thing for the war doctrine. Secondly, there wasn't, there wasn't any awareness. It looked as if uh, we were just given it for free uh, after the Six-Day War that um, air superiority is most important, is, the, is, the, 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 the supreme, is of supreme importance to winning a war. And um, here, the Air Force could not implement its orders of obtaining aerial superiority. There are all kinds of reasons for that. Um, I want to, well, don't want to go into it, but once you don't have that freedom, everything looks different. 
and there's no other way about it. And therefore, air supremacy um, is still vital to be able to uh, operate against air bases and against um, ground to air missiles, surface to air missiles. This is still, I think, it still remains a vital necessity that we can't do without. Now, to conclude, first of all, we won that war and uh, we got within artillery range uh, from Damascus and to the 101st kilometer thanks to excellent commanders and uh, fighters. I think the uh, top command was also very good, doing very well, even though people try, do tend to uh, um, uh, scorn them right now and uh, uh, slander them. But I think that to a much greater extent that in the Six Day War, we defeated two huge armies. You see, the number of uh, aircraft that we shot down was 470 out of 700, all with pilots in them. In the Six Day War, we uh, killed them on the ground. Now, that was already, the, the Yom Kippur War was already after they'd got new equipment from Russia. Now, when you shoot down, I'm sorry, the number is 374 um, airplanes, that's a completely different world. And therefore, the defeat for both the Syrian and the Egyptian Air Force was uh, much uh, graver than in the Six-Day War. And to rebuild the uh, Air Force was a difficult thing. It, it's, uh, that's one of the reasons why the Syrians decided to put less emphasis on the uh, uh, Air Force since then. And I can only salute everyone. I think that um, people tend to look at the failures uh, rather than look at the entire view of the war. And I think we have to look at it more strategically because local uh, failures happen and they could happen on a big scale as well, but I think the general victory is what's most important for the State of Israel. Thank you very much. Thank you, David Ivry and uh, Mendy Meron.